Did you see the recent Reuters story, an exclusive touting a new solution, apparently, to violent crime? I'm talking about so-called smart guns. Well, the Reuters story trumpeted the whiz bang technology that supposedly allows you and only you to fire your gun. We're talking about things like fingerprint readers and radio frequency identification. Sounds cutting edge, right? No, actually no. You see, when we get back, we're gonna talk about smart guns, so-called smart guns, and what effects, if any, they might have on violent crime in America. Hey folks, I'm Mark and welcome to the Four Boxes Diner. Imagine this scene, a criminal is trying to break into your home. You have your firearm ready to defend your family and your life. The criminal doesn't back down when you announce that you have a gun. Now you see him aim his weapon at you. This is it, this is the moment you've been training for. You have to use your gun in self-defense to save lives, including your own life. So call in on all your training, you take aim, you pull the trigger and nothing happens. That's right, your weapon doesn't fire. You see, you have a so-called smart gun, and it's not so smart after all, it turns out in that scenario. In that actual critical life-saving moment, it's finicky technology doesn't work. Think I'm making this up? Not necessarily at all. A Philadelphia TV news station recently aired a story on a smart gun manufacturer, for example. I'll check it out down below, uh, a link to the story. And you can check out the footage of a guy demonstrating his, this supposedly fancy new firearm. He says he's gonna fire two rounds in the video. You'll see, to see the video, see if I'm telling the truth. But the second time he pulls the trigger, nothing happens. In fact, that's what appear, from all appearances, the gun seems to fail to fire. And this was supposed to be a revolutionary new firearm. Well, you know what? The reality is this, folks. We've been hearing for years about how smart guns are about to save us, right? Here's a headline that ran in the magazine Fortune. Fortune. Smart guns, they're ready, are we? You know where they ran that story in Fortune? That would be in the year of our Lord 2015. And a New York Times story ran this headline. Smart guns proving to be no quick fix for firearm violence. I'll say that New York Times story about smart guns ran when? In the year 1999. And during the Obama era, there was a lot of encouragement for manufacturers to invest in smart gun technology. There was a lot of encouragement from the government in various ways, right? They all wanted this sort of affordable, reliable weapon, a weapon that customers would be willing to bet their life on. But the reality is that no one seems to have gotten close, in my opinion. And in my opinion, it is unlikely, frankly, that we will get any kind of reliable smart gun technology that we would trust our lives with anytime in the near future. It seems to me that smart guns have been failing for decades. And if you take a minute to look at these newfangled firearms, you'll see that they're probably gonna fail again and again. I mean, that's kind of my opinion. Uh, you gotta reach your own opinion, but that's kind of my thought. And of course, let's talk for a moment hypothetically though. What if the technology worked the way people would like it to work, at least in theory, right? I mean, wouldn't it be great if a criminal could not use a stolen gun or if a child could not accidentally fire a weapon he or she stumbled upon? But to consider smart gun technology, the good and the bad and the ugly of them properly as I see it, you have to think about the scope of the problems that smart guns are supposedly trying to solve. You have to think about the problems that smart guns will not solve as well. And you have to think about all the new problems that smart guns could create. You gotta balance it all out. So let's start with the problems that smart guns are supposedly trying to solve. Yes, it's a tragedy anytime an accidental death, gun death, claims a child's life. But we're talking about a tiny proportion of all gun-related deaths. To give you a sense of it, there's way less than 1% or maybe 125 a year on average. Um, again, it's terrible anytime it happens, but 125 you know, gun-related deaths is a very small number in a country that has over 300 million people living in it, okay? And also, this is a problem that can be addressed with proper storage without making all guns dangerously unreliable for everyone, right? Again, you have to behave responsibly with your own firearm, take on responsibility for yourself, okay? And if, if some people cannot handle guns reliably, that doesn't mean the rest of us should pay the price because a few people screw up or are not capable of handling firearms responsibly as adults. And how about stopping criminals from using your gun on you? 
Sure, that might make you feel safer, or some people feel safer, but don't kid yourself. Criminals come to a fight already armed. They don't need your gun. They've got their own guns and their own weapons and their own strategies. That's the reality. Because remember, actions always beat reactions. The criminal that's targeting you or me, they're going to act first. We have to react. And people who, that are reacting always, obviously, are at a distinct disadvantage because they know what they're doing and you don't know what they're doing until they actually do it, right? Now, let's also think about the problems, though, that smart guns won't solve. They won't prevent armed home invasions or armed robberies, right? They're not going to stop premeditated murders or gang shootouts or drug dealers, turf wars. These are going to continue going. They won't, except in rare cases, even stop suicides. They won't stop mass shootings where the shooter comes prepared because that's what they do. And ordinarily, of course, mass shooters, as you know, plan out their attacks carefully ahead of time. And they use their own firearms. And if smart guns ever became prevalent, which in my opinion, I think is unlikely, anything's possible, of course. I'm not right on about everything, especially about prediction the pre predicting the future, okay? Uh, but again, if smart guns ever became prevalent, criminals would do everything they could to defeat the smart feature, or again, they'd bring their own guns, so it wouldn't even matter. And again, that's because criminals rely on guns and they don't care about the law. The only people who would leave the smart lockout in place, let's say, are the law abiding. So this is yet another gun control measure based on smart guns that might occur, that would only affect the law-abiding and the responsible. And again, it would have no real effect on criminals. And what about all the problems that smart guns will cause? First of all, so-called smart technology creates all kinds of safety issues for the gun owner. Oh, you know who that is. That's the person the gun is supposed to protect. I mean, keep in mind that electronic technology introduces new risks of failure. We know this. I mean, it's annoying for all of us when your Wi-Fi or my Wi-Fi goes out or you need to update your software and reboot your computer or you know, turn off your phone. But what happens when your smart guns, your so-called smart guns, fingerprint scanner or pin pad bugs out and doesn't work? That's gonna be extra, extra exciting when you're trying to fix this problem with your smart gun while a guy with a knife is charging at you trying to kill you. Plus, of course, smart guns rely by and large on software and our radio frequencies. This introduces a whole mess of security issues. Remember a few weeks ago, all the airlines were worried about the conversion to 5G near their airports? And what about the multi-billion dollar corporations that get hacked all the time? Do you think the hackers will some off, you know, somehow lay off smart guns? I'm not saying that's likely to occur, but geez, you know, you in introduce technology, all sorts of things could occur. And smart guns, of course, like most new technologies, will be prohibitively expensive for many people. I mean, if they ever come to the market, which as I said, I'm skeptical that will occur in any real way. I could be wrong, but that's my thought. Um, if they ever come to the market, I guess they'll cost thousands of dollars, especially at the beginning. I mean, the cheapest one in the Reuters story that I'll put down below in the description of this video is supposed to retail for something like 900 bucks. And it's not like you can expect huge savings from mass production if that can ever be achieved. And again, it has to be mass produced before you get those volume discounts on your products. I think it's safe to predict that a gun that uses a firing pin and a bullet will always be cheaper than one who adds in all this dubious technology. Just think about automobiles, right? The cars we drove in the 60s and the 70s got you to the grocery store just fine, just like the cars now. Of course, these cars today are, 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 are far, far more expensive because they have all this computerized electronics in them. But at the end of the day, they both get you to the supermarket just fine. Again, in my opinion, give me a dumb gun over a smart gun any day. I want to talk about how anti-gunners view smart guns. Okay, now you might look at these issues that I've identified in today's video with smart guns as bugs to be fixed. But in my view, to the anti-gun lobby, these problems are not really bugs. They're actually features. And what do I mean by that? Well, ask yourself, why are the anti-gunners so excited at the prospect of smart guns? What's in it for them and for their anti-gun cause? Well, let's think about this for a second. Just like certain elements want to have five and six dollar a gallon gasoline. Why? To just stop, to probably to stop the deplorables uh, like you and I, from driving cars, many anti-gunners want guns to be complex, hard to use, 
and prohibitively expensive for most Americans. And why is that? That's because the anti-gunners really want to disarm gun owners and discourage gun ownership and to discourage gun culture. And how would getting some smart guns on the market help them do that? Or at least how do the anti-gunners think that getting smart guns that are expensive onto the market will help them do their thing? Well, here's my best guess in my view as to how the anti-gunners will play this game, okay? They're gonna follow the following step-by-step -step process that's gonna look a little bit like what I'm about to describe, okay? Step one, they're gonna make a smart gun that clearly isn't worth mass producing, right? They're gonna make something that they can point out that exists, but it probably isn't worth mass producing because there's not gonna be enough demand for it. Step two, they're gonna get some good publicity with their buddies in the mainstream media by all the anti-gun writers who understand the plan. These are the same people that use the phrases assault weapon and who use the phrases uh, weapons of war and gun violence, right? This is the same people that use these kind of language um, and not clear they're gonna use this in their newspaper articles and pretend it's just news and factual when it's really, of course, anti-gun propaganda. Now, then I think what they would do is you may even have a few anti-gun police chiefs in the usual suspect places like New York City, Chicago, Los Angeles, San Francisco. They will loudly proclaim that they're going to test the technology and that their fire, you know, that their law enforcement is behind these firearm technology, something like that. Even if they never really adopt it with their officers, they're going to say they're looking into it, make it look like it's coming, it's cutting edge. Um, that's what they'll do. And then step three of this, after they bring about all that public relations uh, plan and campaign, uh, I think step three will be, they will start to herald smart guns through their political classes and political friends as the end or the start of the end of so-called gun violence, which as you know, is really a propaganda term. And then I think what they're gonna do is step four is they'll start passing laws making non-smart guns illegal, saying that anyone that has a non-smart gun is acting negligently, is de facto uh, act engaged in misconduct, they're not taking proper steps, it's kind of like now they're not wearing a seatbelt anymore, you know how they're gonna play that game. And ta-da, guess what's happened? You burn the Second Amendment if that's all you have in the marketplace is so-called smart guns. Okay, and if you think I'm exaggerating, I don't think I am, because I want you to go back to the year 2002. In 2002, the state of New Jersey actually passed a law saying that once smart guns went on sale anywhere in the United States, within 30 months thereafter, all handguns sold in the state of New Jersey must be smart guns. Now keep in mind, this was years before smart guns were even close to being a reality. Thank God that New Jersey law has since been repealed, but it exposed, in my view, the anti-gunner's true ambition, and that's to use smart gun technology, so-called smart gun technology, as a way to ban all the other guns in America. Okay, and by the way, so-called smart guns are not the only tech gimmick that the anti-gunners will do this with. Have you ever heard of micro stamping or bullet serialization? I'll tell you all about these cockamamie plans in another video on another day. So let's wrap up. The media are talking about smart guns again. Not the first time, and I'm sure it won't be the last time. But I don't think you should believe the hype. First of all, in my view, smart guns don't work right now, and I don't know about you, but I will not believe that they work reliably enough for me to put my life on the line with them until I see that the US Secret Service and the Navy SEALs switch over for like a decade for these, with these smart guns, and then we can start to talk, okay? Let them go first. They can show us the way, and then we'll follow them after they've done it for long enough. Right? Until then, I don't want to talk about smart guns. In fact, until then, I'm going to stick with my dumb gun because I feel comfortable with my dumb guns. Second, smart guns is my view when they finally come out in any real way or will be prohibitively expensive. Okay? And given the complexity of technology, especially new technology, that might never change. Right? It's like why our cars today are far more expensive than the cars that still got us the same grocery store decades ago, except now that all that fancy electronic stuff and everything else like that makes our cars far more expensive today, uh, no matter how they're measured nominally or in real dollar terms, okay? And in my view, I'm guessing the only people who will be able to afford smart guns are those celebrities and financial gurus, and of course, their armed security guards. That's how it always works. 
And third and most importantly, smart guns, as I see it, are really a Trojan horse for banning other guns, right? The anti-gunners know exactly what they're doing. They're going to disarm you by law if they can. They'll also disarm you by making guns expensive, inoperable, and overregulated. That's what their battle plan has been forever, and it ain't stopping anytime soon. So I hope you've learned something here today. Thanks for joining me at the Four Boxes Diner, where we serve hot, fresh Second Amendment news and analysis. And if you like what you heard, please subscribe and spread the word. We'll see you next time here at the Four. Box's Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.